Welcome students. Um, my name is Dr. Belinda Lopez and today we are going to talk about uh, the Rural Knowledge Center. And uh, the information communication technology is a brilliant means of establishing a platform to provide both public and private means of information and services to millions of people in the urban and rural areas. The country has initiated numerous ICT projects to ensure that the benefits of ICT reaches the entire population of the country. And Rural Knowledge Center is one such project. These are centers. Now, when we're talking about rural knowledge centers, there are numerous centers across the country which provide distant services from a single window to the people in the rural areas. State of the art, high tech information, uh, information technology are provided at these rural knowledge centers so that we are able to reach out to the unreached, to the unserved and underserved communities and the people in our country. Now let's just look at the concept of the Rural Knowledge Center. Now um, this was a program that was designed as a single window program that provides knowledge to the rural people using space technology. Over the years, knowledge has become a strategic national and organizational resource. There has been a revolution and rapid strides have been made, taken in the application of uh, space technology. Information and communication technology has been a sector which has adapted the space technology maximum. This has resulted in the national economy becoming more knowledge based where even the production and ma management um, manufacturing aspects are dependent on information and knowledge. Now we need to understand what is the difference between information and knowledge? Now, when we're talking about information, it is knowing what is and what no, knowing is uh, what is and what for. Whereas when we're talking about knowledge, it's something much more larger. It is knowing how to use that information and where to use the information. And when we understand that, then we call it as knowledge. In the context of home science, when we look at the subject family resource management, people will have both information. When it is information, they know something about, oh, Bin, I'm walking about all over the place. Okay, so the, the, it's very essential that we understand the distinction between information and knowledge because that is the whole purpose of setting up a, a rural knowledge center. Here in the rural knowledge center, it is a center wherein people are supposed to be educated. We are not just giving them information, we are going to give them knowledge. So what is information and what is knowledge has to be understood as an extension personnel. We need to understand what is information and what is knowledge. It is very important that we develop an understanding of the concepts of how social security works, what is social security and how it gets translated into the, when it goes out into the community level it gets translated as schemes and programs so the concept may be social security and the scheme might be an insur insurance program okay so these rural knowledge centers is not just a source of information to the people in rural areas but is a source of knowledge in order to provide this information and knowledge to the people receiving studios were set up in villages all these receivings and they were connected to a central studio using space and communication technology. The central studio, a high powered SATCOM center which operates in collaboration with ISRO, it was supposed to be providing com uh, computer facilities with nodes on a LAN which will assist in training as well as developing program material video conferencing facilities with scope for linkages to the SATCOM center may also be installed at the rural knowledge centers. A high power delivery system with fo focus on converting information to knowledge is existing at the knowledge, uh, rural knowledge centers. Any piece of information will become knowledge when people know how to use that information. Generic information will be converted into location and time specific information at this technology intense centers and will also train community members to add value to that information by making that piece of information work for the rural people or the local people. Now, what were the goals and objectives of these rural knowledge centers? 
the goal visualized for the rural knowledge center was to establish a means of delivering the need based education and services to the communities at the grassroots through the application of the benefits of information technology this was the vision that was existing the objectives were to reduce the digital divide using technology especially tele, uh, telecommunication technology create a co coalition or networks of relevant actors with the national informatics centers was another objective the increasing efficiency and productivity of the existing cooperatives by setting up state of the art computer communi uh, communication centers was another objective the center was also to act as a rep uh, repository of local knowledge and this was to be enriched by applying the benefits of information communication technology now these rural knowledge centers were expected to provide solutions to local problems by adopting different technologies and placing especially placing the problems in different contexts introducing various kinds of relationships that can be pursued by the local people was another as uh, objective of the rural knowledge center and it was also meant to set up booths and networks of booths that would provide information combined with education to local people establishing a geographic information system of the surrounding communities bring about greater transparency in administration especially in matters related to land was one of the chief uh, objective of the uh, rural knowledge centers now we have to understand this rural knowledge center had certain distinctive features okay now it was the use of technology especially telecommunication to extend education to the communities at the grassroots level we have already had various extension programs but this was distinct in the fact one of the major feature distinguishing character of this uh, rural knowledge center was the use of technology it was operating on the principle of integrating appropriate use of the internet the cable tv cell phones community radios and the vernacular press all this was supposed to be integrated so that we could convert information into knowledge for the people at the rural areas it was also to provide need based services through a single window now all extension programs are meant to provide need based services but what was happening is when we looking at if you're looking at the case of an a farmer agricultural farmer he would get information from the he would have to go to the agricultural department to get information about that he would have to go to the uh, revenue department to get information about the land uh, holdings so he had to go visit various departments but the rural knowledge center was perceived to be a single window service it also provides knowledge connectivity to grassroots communities now it was connecting through the rural knowledge centers we were able to connect let me just uh, be very very specific about this rural knowledge center the whole concept was now to connect rural areas to latest technology so that they could benefit by the use of the space technology the country was making large scale advances in terms of space technology and the benefits were supposed to reach the people so what they started was having centralized centers which would have the technology technology of connecting the various rural areas so now what was uh, and therefore they were linking all these rural centers they set up receiving stage, uh, stations across the country numerous receiving stations were set up and also for every 15 to 20 um, villages they were setting up one rural knowledge center they were receiving state uh, stations at the rural areas at the village level and we had the rural knowledge centers one for every 15 to 20 villages so this would act as a disseminating point of view so here uh, uh, thing here the information would be converted into knowledge and it also would be adapted to 
local requirements and then would be beamed across to the receiving stations. So people in the rural areas would sit down in their villages, interact with the people and the studios at the rural knowledge centers, question them, get their clarifications done so that they could later on go and use those informations. So this was the kind of a feature that they kind of planned. So in order to do this, numerous organizations were required. The whole process was started by the UN, where in, uh, sometime in 2003, uh, three, they started this program of the Rural Knowledge Center, wherein they thought of taking information technology to the uh, people across the globe. Now, uh, initiated by the UN, we had go down. We had numerous go down, go down, go down. We had numerous other organizations here in the country. In India, we had the vision 2003, wherein we were expected to go down, please. Go down, go down. Vision, uh, India's mission for 2000, where every village would have a knowledge center. And the flagship project was Connect the World Movement. Okay, Connect the World Movement. Go down. A national alliance was formed in 2007, which consisted of 22 government organizations. This included the Department of Technology, then we had the Department of Panchayat Raj, go down, Department of Panchayat Raj, we had the Department of, uh, India, uh, we had the ISRO, that is the Indian Space Research Organization, which was providing all the technical uh, support. Then we had the te Telecom Regulatory Authority, which was also involved in the project. We had e National Common Minimum Program, which was also involved in this uh, rural knowledge will, uh, thing. Rural knowledge centers, besides the 22 government organizations, we also had 94 civil society organizations, 34 pri from the private sector organizations like NASCOM and HCL. And we also had a lot of educational institutions like the Indira Gandhi National Open Universities. Then we had banks, financial institutions like the National Bank for Agriculture and Rural Development, which were involved in this project. Besides that, we had international support for this project, wherein again we had numerous organizations like go up. We had active participation of international organizations like, go down please, like uh, the Swiss agencies, we had agencies from uh, Canada which were involved in this, New, the World Bank was a part of this uh, project, we had numerous projects, we had the food and agricultural uh, organization which was also involved in this pro program, we had numerous organizations, uh, international organizations which were a part of this rural knowledge centers, go down, come. Now the organizational structure, now when we look at how this program was uh, structured, it was structured in a three tier system wherein we had the extension agencies, then we had the rural knowledge centers and the village resource centers. The extension agency was the bridge, the uh, core agency, the uh, basic fundamental agency was the extension agency which would uh, bridge the and act as a link between the local communities and uh, providers of information communication technology. Okay, they, they, they were the initiators of the project, they would go into the village, uh, campaign for this particular project, identify local people to be trained as uh, functionaries of this particular project and then those trained functionaries would go out and market the concept of the rural knowledge center and they would come back again and the project would be initiated. Then we had the rural knowledge centers go down rural knowledge centers which was to decide uh, uh, designed to act as a nodal center and uh, this would kind of link up all uh, around 50 to 60 20 to 30 communities and they would kind of uh, provide them with all the required information and then they would in turn act as a link between the extension agency and the village level uh, centers go down please the village resource center was located in the local communities and it would cater to the single village at the community level and it would only be providing whatever information was given by the rural knowledge centers. It was a center for dissemination of information. 
and one very important aspect is the kind of process that was involved always this rural knowledge center would follow this particular process of being a need, uh, beginning with a need assessment villages would be surveyed and need assessments would be done then they would mobilize the people in the village to accept this concept of rural knowledge center and then they would build their capacities so that they could incorporate uh, uh, technology incorporate information communication technology then they would go through the process of installing the in the technological uh, devices such as uh, the computers the receiving stations the broadcasting stations the internet all those things had to be installed they would go through the process of installation then operation then the project would start with op uh, and it would be constantly monitored and evaluated the basic activities that was undertaken by the research, uh, rural knowledge center was informa providing information and they would also have this uh, concept of sharing equipment something like using the internet using the ham radio so they had this other co concept of pro sharing the information equipment they would also go through the process of providing education to the people and they would help them build uh, net, develop networks among them uh, themselves like a farmers network fruit growers network things like that so they would build a networking and they would also connect them to banking to the banking sector they would provide online services let me go back again and uh, emphasize the uh, aspect of undertaking a needs assessment this is one of the fundamental uh, aspect of any kind of a, a rural uh, knowledge center if the rural knowledge center has to be set up very important that a needs assessment is done of the communities in which the center is being set up uh, if that assessment is not done whatever program uh, programs are undertaken will not be used effectively by the local people the program might be very very efficient and effectively set up but if the uh, needs assessment is not done lo local participation will become very very less so it's very important that a needs assessment is done and uh, their own social uh, it is important that they understand the social dynamics and the diversity of interests in the local areas and that has to match the local dynamics and the diversity has to be matching for effective functioning of the rural knowledge centers okay in conclusion what i would like to emphasize is most of the extension projects have been project oriented and uh, similarly as long as the project is functioning they have been uh, functioning effectively and they tend to lose out once the project personnel pull out and uh, this rural knowledge center will if this rural knowledge the concept of the rural knowledge center is to function effectively it is very necessary that we do a uh, in depth needs assessment of the local communities in which we are functioning and also try and mobilize local people now i, I was telling you all previously i was telling you all that there are 22 government departments involved there are uh, na international level organizations that are involved but when all these organizations are involved if we do not include the local people in those programs the project will not be able to function effectively local people when we are designing a program meant for local people the local people have to be involved at every stage only then will these programs succeed effect effectively so it's very important that needs assessment of the local communities is done mobilization of the po local pop, uh, uh, population is done capacity is developed local people's capacity have to be developed if you are bringing in information tech uh, communication technology techniques of using the technology has to be taught to the local people and unless and until that is not done you might bring in a set of people who are capable of uh, using the technology but if the local people are not able to use it these rural knowledge centers will not function effectively important that we involve local people